kids, it's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade Power Season 3 Episode So tonight's review. episode opened up with Angela and Tasha in the mirror getting dressed for their day. Angela's putting on her New York and Company shift dress, and Tasha is in the mirror, honey, flexing in, in her Asian provocateur lingerie, honey. She was giving us cocoa skin, honey. She was giving us boobs and ass for days she was giving us that pretty round brown round the way girl realness and i was here for it yes god for the melanin ass and titties was sitting bitch then we see that while they're getting dressed ghost is in the bathroom on the phone with tasha and they're talking about Tariq going to counseling. Tasha tells him that I can go and drop him off, but I'm going to need you to go pick him up. And Ghost has always has far better things to do than to be there for his children. He has a meeting that he needs to attend to, so he can't make it. Tasha is once again pissed the fuck off because this nigga can't never do shit that she asked him to do. She's always there to the heavy lifting for this nigga while he's over there gallivanting, running clubs and shit and sticking his dick up in the Puerto Rican princess. She's like, look, nigga, you need to show your face a little bit more around her. He was like, well, you won't let me bring the kids over here. She was like, you goddamn right. You can see them anytime you want to, ghost. As long as it's not at Angela's. I don't need Raina coming home with a fucking switchblade, nigga. So the whole time they're on the phone talking, of course, Angela is ear hustling like all the fuck ways. So they end the conversation. Ghost comes into the bedroom. He sits on the edge of the bed. And Angela says, Amy, I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. The last thing I ever want to do is keep you away from your kids. Are you comfortable with the kids coming back here? And he's like, yeah, of course. Then we switched to Tommy and Holly fucking. And it was the most uncomfortable shit I've ever seen in my life. I did. I was just not here with them two pasty, pale-ass motherfuckers banging each other's backs out. He was just looking like, when is Jeopardy coming on? And she was looking like, I think I got a hot pocket in the oven. Like, it was just so uncomfortable because neither one of them niggas was into it because they both have so much shit going through their minds. She over there pregnant, don't know how to tell this nigga. He over there trying to figure out how to kill ghosts and how not to get killed his damn self. So after some rough, dry fucking, Tommy finally comes. And as he comes, spit flies all out his mouth. I'm like, ew, nigga, like what? Like, uh, uh, uh. And that was some authentic shit that happened. Like, that was not in the script. After they fuck, he tells her that he wants her to call Tasha to set up a meeting so she can come sign some papers. And so, Holly asks him, well, what happened with you meeting with Tyreek? And he tells her it was Ghost that called him. You know, Ghost is still up to his old stupid ass games. So, she asks him, I mean, did you kill him? And he was like, no, I did not. So, she suggests he hire someone to do it. And he was like, well, last time we you know outsource some work that didn't really go too well so i don't really know about that as he gets up to leave she picks up the phone and calls the wellness center so she can set up an appointment to see exactly what her options are when it comes to this pregnancy i'm like girl just abort it and cut your losses <laughs> we see jukebox she's in her kitchen with a bunch of underprivileged ass niggas and they setting up a fucking lick a heist and shit so she's telling everybody what you going to do. Dominique, you going to do this. Frog, you going to do this. Earl, you going to do this. And then Kanan walk his ass up in there. And all of a sudden, his crispy, crunchy ass is so much better now. He is healing like he's Wolverine. Kanan wants to be the fifth man, but the little dude Frog is like, we don't want your cripple ass nowhere near this project. I don't know who the fuck you are, but you need to sit your cripple ass the fuck down, sir. Jukebox then has to remind all these niggas that this is her shit and she will tell what they're going to do and who's going to play what part. I'm like, yes, bitch. Who won the world? Girls. So after everyone leaves, Kanan assures Jukebox that he can hold a gun. So he pulls out a gun and, you know, he tries to pull the trigger, but, you know, he's really having trouble doing it. She's like, nigga, I bet you can't even fucking jerk off. Jerk one off, then come holler at me, fool. So Jukebox leaves and goes upstairs and leaves Candy and Kanan in the kitchen together, alone. So Kanan asks candy for some bullets so he can go in the backyard and you know pump out a few rounds to get that trigger finger back in order so she gets up and closes the kitchen door and then she starts stripping and shit she starts showing us them old pancakes and your mama ass titties for us and i'm like okay candy bitch where's my popcorn i'm here for this so candy signed this over to him with her little blue jean old navy skirt on and she sit on the edge of the table and she's like jukebox don't think you can jerk off is she right? And he tries to, you know, grip her thigh real quick. And she smack his hand away. 
She said, nah, son, you ain't about to smash. This is about your hand. And so he gets the hint that, oh, I need to rub one out real quick. So he sit there. He put his hand down his pan. He get the rubbing one off real quick. You know what I'm saying? And so he looking at her. She looking at him. You know what I'm saying? Juices is flowing and shit. And so then she grabbed his hand and stick his hand up her skirt. And she was like, nigga, you ain't about to be the only one that's having some fun. I need you to get me off too. So he jerking himself off and then fingering her pussy. And it's just like, ar, 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 ar. it's just so much going on. I don't even know how he was able to coordinate that shit. After they get done jacking each other off and shit, Candy go upstairs and tell Jukebox that both of his hands work well. <laughs> you see Tasha coming into her building and she's just gleefully happy shit. And then next thing you know, she see Angela sitting in the motherfucking waiting area. She looking like, huh? <laughs> what this hoe doing up in my motherfucking building and shit? So then she look at her and say, Is he in jail? And Angela says, No. And so she gets nervous. She's like, Is he dead? And she was like, No, 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 no. Tasha's not even like that. Jamie's all right. I came here to see you. I just want to let you know that I got Tariq's record expunged. I talked to the DA and I got everything worked out. It was all my fault and I'm so sorry. You know, I just want to apologize and let you know that I'm so sorry, Tasha. I'm so motherfucking sorry. It's all my fault. It's the least that I can do. And Tasha was like, <laughs> yeah, the least. But you know you did do it for Tariq. You sure as hell didn't do it for me. You did this for Ghost. And as long as you stay in this thing with him, you're going to be doing for Ghost the rest of your life. Goodbye. And I was like, that was cute, Tasha, but I just need for Tasha's lines to be a little bit more forceful. Like, if I would have wrote that shit, it would have went like this. It Bitch, who the fuck you think you fooling, hoe? You ain't doing this for me all my motherfucking kids. You doing that for that black ass nigga over there. But let me tell you something, J-Lo, Selena, ain't nobody over here feeling you. And if you bring your ass over here to my motherfucking crib again, bitch, we gonna have problems. I do not wanna have to put the power on you. Bitch, you already fucking my husband. You think you gonna show up in my motherfucking building like it's all Gucci, bitch? I will take these earrings off. What don't you get? Like, girl, I need Natasha to, you know, do a little bit of this on this hole. Let her know, like, ugh. Then we see Tommy. He goes by himself to go get his coins from Chin. Chin lets him know that, you know, he solved this whole problem with his son being disrespectful and going by behind his back, stepping on the motherfucking product and, and making a profit off of it and keeping the motherfucking coins. And then tells Dylan, his son, to apologize to Tommy. Dylan apologizes to Tommy and we realize his daddy not only cut off his motherfucking pinky finger, but he made that nigga shave his head off. And I was like, uh, he ain't that cute no more. I don't want to give him the box no more. Mm. And so they shake hands or whatever. And Tommy gripped the fuck out of his hand like, nigga, I see you. Don't try me. And then after Tommy leaves, we see the camera pan on Dylan. And that lets us know that Dylan ain't feeling Tommy. And he wants motherfucking revenge. Fuck what the fuck his daddy talking about. He about to handle that hoe. We see Greg back in his crib sharing a beer with his homeboy from the DA. And he thanks his homeboy for coming through with several aliases for, Ru for Ruiz. So we find out that Ruiz is in San Diego and Greg is going to fly down there to go see him. So as they shooting the shit, the dude make a comment about Angela sucking dick to get her position on the motherfucking task force. And Greg, you know, does not think that that little comment was cute. He was like, she ain't suck dick to get on motherfucking position. Letting us know that Greg still got feelings for Angela and that he's still in love with her. Because this is my favorite scene of the night. Angela comes home, honey. She is happy as a motherfucking Bessie Bug, bitch. She come in the house, Jamie in the motherfucking kitchen, drinking and thinking and shit, cooking up some shit. We ain't never seen this nigga cook a meal at home, but this nigga stay over there cooking money through motherfucking Sunday. And I'm like, you's a bitch ass nigga. You can't even go pick your kid up from school, but you can be over there cooking and fixing this bitch rice and peas and oxtails and shit. Boy, ooh. It's like it's smelling good up in here, Jamie. What you fixing? What you cooking? How you doing, Poppy? How you doing, Daddy? And he was like, you went to see Tasha? the hell were you thinking Angela and so she looks at him and she was like after hearing your conversation this morning and knowing how much you miss the kids it seemed like the right thing to do I had good intentions you want me to suck your dick <laughs> and he was like I appreciate you taking care of Tariq's record but you should ask me before you go over there and so she fold her arms she said 
I don't need to ask your permission, Jamie. And he said, oh, oh, yes, you do. Especially when it comes to my wife. Ha! 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 Let me rewind that back for you. Especially when it comes to my wife. Y'all, I hollered so motherfucking loud with that nigga said that shit. I'm like, about time he checked that hoe. Like, about time this hoe finally get to see who this nigga really is and that he ain't fucking shit. About time he started treating her like he treat Tasha ass. Bitch, you ain't got no motherfucking prize. That's why Tasha ain't motherfucking pressed or beat for your ass, bitch. Because she know what you over there dealing with. It's just a matter of time before you start figuring this shit out, Ho. Ooh, side bitches always thinking they get something. Bitch, you ain't getting shit but a headache. Realize what he says. He said, you know what I mean. Then the doorbell rang. It's pads and shit. Angela says, no, I don't know that I do. And he was like, you gonna get the door. Like, basically, bitch, I ain't here for what the fuck you talking about. Go ask the motherfucking door. Like, bitch, what? Like, I'm really getting tired of you. This shit ain't fun no more. Like, I just want to go home <laughs> at this point. So she put on a happy face. And she go answer the door for Paz. Like, Paz, how you doing? Give me a hug, mommy. I miss you. He says to Paz, you remember Jamie? And Paz, old shady ass, say, mm-hmm. Because you know that bitch is not pressed for this nigga. Because she see him for who the fuck he is. I just love that scene because we're finally breaking down the walls of their relationship. This shit is crumbling down with every episode. By the end of this season, Ghost and Angela's relationship will be defunct. That nigga's gonna move back home with Tasha after Kanan makes an attempt on Tyreek's life. He'll be back home. Him and Tasha be working shit out. Him and Angela will no longer be together. Angela and Greg are gonna get back together. Mark my words. So then we see Tasha and Tariq in the kitchen talking and she tells him that Angela got his record expunged and shit and he's all happy and shit because you know he's about to be a career criminal just like his daddy. So he apologizes to her for, you know, being disrespectful and for being a jackass. And so she accepts his apology and she also tells him that there are certain things about me and your father that we don't want anyone to know. You go to this therapist, I just want you to answer his questions. Don't say more than you have to. Tyreek all webs to look at ass like, you want me to lie? And she was like, no, baby. You're a smart kid. You know what to do. I'm like, nigga, you want to have balls enough to take a, a damn gun to school. You better have balls enough to tell a little white lie. Shut your ass up. Don't try to be white now, nigga. Switch back to Ghost and Angela and Paz. And they at the table eating some old good old arroz con poils and shit. <laughs> And I'm like, this nigga over there drinking wine and having a good old time while Tasha back at home taking care of shit, making sure this they dumb ass son don't tell the therapist all their goddamn business and put all their asses in jail. But this nigga over here kiki and shit with hoes that barely like his ass. I'm like, ooh, I cannot stand Ghost. And so then Ghost asked her about her son and she was like, you know, he's doing well. How are your kids? And how, you know, how are they dealing with, you know, the news about the divorce? And Ghost sits quiet. And Paz looking around like, oh, you're not divorced yet. And so Angela jump her ass in and says, he's working on it. And she's like, sure he is. Okay. So Angela gets up and leaves because you know when shit gets hot, she can't take, you know, reality being forced into her face. So she gets up and leaves. And Ghost offers Paz's son a position at the club and Paz says to him I wouldn't want to put my son in an awkward situation and Go says what do you mean and she says just in case things don't work out between you and Angela because I mean she sees that this shit is about to be defunct in a minute like she sees exactly what the fuck we see and, and the rest of the goon squad in the truck they pull up to a motherfucking jewelry store Kana says, it's showtime, bitch. <laughs> he pulled his ski mask over his face with a skull and shit over it. All the niggas hop out. The shot was beautifully filmed. I love that shot. It was so hood. It was so gangster. Oh, I loved it. It reminded me of some dead presidents type shit. So they get out, and then we see the little dude from the pharmacy that survived. 
he works at the jewelry store, so he the one that gave them the plug on this whole heist. So we see him in his little suit and tie and shit. He spots came in, the, you know, the crew about to come in, so he buzzes them in. Came in, the whole crew come in with their guns and shit, tell everybody to get out on the floor. They start breaking the motherfucking glass, taking all the jewelry in the front. Came in, puts his gun on the little dude from the pharmacy or whatever, pushes him to the back. They go in the back where the, the expensive shit is, the good shit. The dude open up the safe like, nigga, calm the fuck down. We in the back. You ain't got to be putting your hands on me like that no more. Like, ain't nobody seeing us back here. Kana like, all right, nigga, just give me the good shit. Kana get his hand on the good shit, turn the gun on the little dude. And dude was like, what the fuck you doing? He was like, bye, motherfucker. You about to die. Pop. And pop that nigga in the motherfucking forehead and shoot his ass for talking all that shit to him two episodes ago. And I'm like, y'all motherfuckers going to stop talking to Kana crazy shit. You wind up dead, nigga. They get all the jewelry. They run out. They get in the car and they ski skirt. So then we see Jukebox pull up and we got the, you know, the radio call in from the dispatcher. And we heard Jukebox say, I've got a black explorer leaving at a high rate of speed. No plates occupied by four white males heading northeast. And I was like, come through Jukebox. Pin it on some fucking innocent ass white folks. They always pin shit on us. Yes, God, you box. I live for her ass in that scene. Ghost and Dre are at the club, and Ghost congratulates Dre on really hustling after fucking up the shit with the little DJ guy. So, to congratulate him and to reward him, he lets him sit in on his meeting with Karen. So, Karen shows up, and Dre tells her that she looks banging in her dress. And she's looking at him like, are you like that nigga? <laughs> I got more where this came from. <laughs> I, I, I use on one. So, Ghost looking at them like, what the fuck are you niggas on? Like, I need for you motherfuckers to concentrate. She tells him that she needs more information on Ghost because she really can't find anything out there on him. And if they're going to work with each other, she needs to him to up his social media profile and start partying with his club go goers. He says to him, let them think that they know you and they'll keep coming back for more. And Dre jumps in and says, no doubt. Demand is supply. And old girl says, don't you mean supply and demand? Dre says, nah, they've been teaching that wrong for years. You see, demand comes first and whoever supplies it profits. Ghost is looking at them while they eye fucking each other. He is just not pleased. I mean, Karen basically set her pussy out on the table and was like, just fuck me. She wants some black cock so motherfucking bad. That bitch wants some motherfucking dark meat. She likes the niggas. Basically, she can take Ghost or Dre. She don't give a fuck shit. She'll take both of them at the same damn time. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> we see Greg show up in San Diego in the kitchen. And Ruez is in the kitchen mopping floors after, after hours and shit. Yes pretends to be Armando Garcia. He done shaved his head and shit because you know he's trying to be incognito. He don't want nobody to find him. Greg is like, nigga, I know it's you. And he introduces himself as an FBI agent. And he's surprised to find Ruiz mopping floors after building the Saldano Nation. And he says to him, I guess you had no place to go after Lobos forced you out. I know you're pissed that he took away everything you work for. And Ruiz ignores him like, I gotta get back to work, Papi. I don't know what the fuck you talking about. Como estas? No way bien. So Greg says to him, you're not safe here. Lobos knows where you are. He has hitters crossing the borders right now to kill you and your family. You got two choices. Stay here and die or take a plea deal and testify against Lobos. With him out the way, you can go back to work with the FBI's blessing. See Tasha in her kitchen pouring some two glasses of Sutter Home Moscato. <laughs> we see Tommy and Holly come in. So Tommy fat ass asks her if she got some leftovers. She like, yeah, nigga, check the fridge. And so Tommy asks Holly when she gonna learn how to cook. She's like, nigga, I got other skills. <laughs> you know how this song do. And so Tariq comes into the kitchen and he speaks to everybody. And Tommy asks him, why is he not in school? And he tells him, you know, how he got suspended or whatever. And... Tommy's like, look, let me talk to you, little homie, because you out here tripping. So we see Holly sitting back watching him be like a father-type figure to Tariq, and that really warms her heart and, you know, makes her feel some type of way, like maybe I should keep this damn baby. So then we see her grab her glass of wine and pour it in the sink, but she thinks no one is looking. But, you know, Tasha got eyes everywhere. She spots her, pour the wine into the sink. And so Tasha says to her, I drink it. You about to cry for no reason. Shit, Holly, please don't tell me you're... And then it died on, this bitch is pregnant. Oh, my God. We see Tommy and Tariq talking, 
And he asked Tariq, where did you get a gun from anyway? And he says he got it from Angela's purse. And Tommy is pissed. Because he's thinking, like, what is Ghost over there doing? How is he letting all these fucking slip-ups happen? Like, what in the fuck is going through my nigga head? Like, this nigga just don't give a fuck about shit no more. Tariq tells Tommy that he just wants his parents to be straight with him. He doesn't get why his mom and dad are no longer together. And why his dad is over there with Angela. And what happened to Sean. And he just feels like Ghost does whatever the fuck he wants and gets away with it. And Tommy agrees. And it was just a fucked up ass situation to see because they're building it up for Tariq to really hate and despise his father. When Kanan comes after Tariq, Ghost is going to be his savior and that's going to pull them back together. But it's going to also make uh, Ghost realize that he has been absentee in his kids' lives and taking his eyes off the motherfucking prize. And if that he was around more, Kanan would not have been able to get that close to his children. We switch to the bathroom. Natasha tells Holly she ain't built for this motherfucking life. She tells her, Every time Tommy leaves out that door, he may not come back. You think you can raise a kid on your own? And Holly says, You do it. And Tasha reminds her, Go say that, honey. And my mama helped me. <laughs> like, don't get it twisted, ho. I got help. Now, Katie Egan, and is that grandma material, honey, child? That bitch still cope on the regular. Have you ever met her crazy ass? And Holly says, No. And so, Tasha says to her, does Tommy want to keep the baby? And then she looks at Holly and realizes that Tommy doesn't know. And she says, and so Holly says, I really want to tell him, but I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it yet. I really love Tommy and I want to be a family. I just don't know. And Tasha says, you cannot fucking tell him. The baby is half his too. If he finds out you did something without telling him, well, I don't want to be you when he finds out, honey. My thoughts is that Holly's going to end up dying this season and what's going to end up happening is she's going to end up dying and getting killed before Tommy's able to find out that she was pregnant and when that hit on her life is made it's going to be made by Lobos and that's what's going to bring him and Ghost back together because they'll be back together with a common enemy which is Lobos those are my thoughts Kanan walk in the kitchen as Candy is in the kitchen making hamburger helping and shit and a wife beater and he looking her all up and down his dick is hard and shit and she look at him she's like this ain't no free show nigga what the fuck you want and so he said where'd you box it and she's like at work saving lives he said, I got something for you and so he hands her a box with a tennis bracelet and he tells her that he wants her to start getting her own money so she don't have to rely on jukebox and she says jukebox gives me everything I need and he says everything and so next thing you know, they start kissing and shit. And he sit her up on the table. And she pulled his old black burnt sausage out of his motherfucking pants. They start fucking. And he tells her, I ain't gonna say nothing if you don't say nothing. And she said, I ain't gonna say nothing. And then, you know, he was giving her some old mediocre strokes. I was like, that's all you got? 50 cent? Like, I need to see you put your back into it with all that motherfucking muscles and shit you got. Her ass should have been flying across the room. Shit, I, I was not impressed by his sex scene. Or Julio sex scene. I was like, nigga, that's all you got? Ugh. So then we see Tasha and Lakeisha walk into the crib and they kick in and shit. And Lakeisha picks up this little design books or whatever. She wants to know, like, what you doing, girl? You about to redecorate? She was like, yeah, yeah I want to redecorate. I just don't know how. I mean, I don't even know where to start my whole life. I've done everything that Ghost wanted me to do. I look the way he want me to look, dress the way he want me to dress, with my hair the way he want me to wear it. I did everything Ghost like. He don't want to decorate this place. I had no say so and something. I don't even know who the fuck I am, nigga. I don't even know who the fuck Tasha St. Patrick the fuck is. I need to find myself. And so Lakeisha's like, you know, before you got with Ghost, you were a totally different person. Now that you're not with Ghost anymore, I see glimpses of who you used to be come back, and I'm so excited that I got my friend back. And I was like, come on, T and Tamara. So... Tasha, so Lakeisha's talking to her and then she goes into Tasha's purse. She pulls out Tasha's gun and she, she's like, bitch, what you doing with this gun? Like, you had this gun at my shop? And Tasha was like, oh, my shop, bitch. Don't forget, I'm the one to put the down payment on that bitch. <laughs> like the shop is on the up east side, bitch. Like, it's protecting us. And so Lakeisha, like, it's cool. We might need it, but just be careful with it, you know, when the kids is at the shop. So Tasha apologizes, and Keisha just wants to know if she being straight up with her, is she keeping it 100, and if there's anything else going on that she needs to know, and Tasha lies. And I was like, God damn it, they already building it up. Something's going to end up happening where Keisha's shop is going to get raided because of Tasha, and the truth is going to come out, and it's going to fuck up their friendship. And I was like, oh, Lakeisha's going to die. I can see them getting rid of Lakeisha. So... 
Dre is at the barbecue spot kicking in with his homeboy. The homeboy want to know if Dre is down with that lick that they was talking about, you know, about them sticking up the club and shit. And Dre is like, nah, I'm good. You know, I ain't trying to do that. So the dude tell him about some Koreans that's bought a whole bunch of MAC-10s to smoke some white nigga that night at a motherfucking church. And Dre realizes that they're talking about Tommy. So Ghost security guy comes to him and tells him that he need to talk about Karen. But Ghost gets a phone call from Dre and is like, look, hold up, give me a minute. So he goes and answers Dre's call. Dre tells him about Tommy and asks him if he want him to go handle them motherfucking niggas because he'll do it because you know this nigga been itching to kill somebody. I'm like, if y'all don't let this nigga kill somebody, I'm just so tired of Dre just itching to murder somebody. Like, goddamn nigga, watch some PBS. Goddamn, watch some Blues Clues. Watch Dora Explore. Get some goddamn happiness in your life with your crazy ass. Tells him, no, chill the fuck out. Bring your ass back here. I got this. So he hang up the phone. And he's thinking, you know, his wheels and shit is turning. So he looks over to the security guy who's having a conversation with somebody. And so since the security guard isn't focused on Ghost, Ghost decides to slip out without him noticing him leaving. Tommy's at the church and he's picking up the money from the priest and him and the priest is having this really deep conversation and that scene was beautifully written by the way. It was just so beautifully written and heartfelt and emotional and it just had your chest pumping. So Tommy tells the priest about him having to do a job that he can't do and he says all my life people had low expectations for me. If I don't do this thing then they're right about me. I can't stand on my own. And I just had tears in my eyes as I was watching it. I was like, oh my God, I just felt so bad for Tommy. I just want Tommy to win and get some self-esteem about himself. And for Ghost to really trust him and believe in him and uplift him as a brother and as a friend. The priest says, you try praying about it? And Tommy says, I don't think the big guy recognizes my voice. It's been a minute since I hit him up. And the priest says, God, God is always listening, Tommy. Sometimes he just doesn't answer our prayers the way we expect him to. You got to ask yourself, is it the right thing to do, and who gets hurt if you don't? So Tommy thinks about it, and then we cut away to him leaving out the church. And as he's walking out, the Koreans roll up, and they start thumping. They're like, <laughs> Tommy gets shot in the arm, and he duck in behind this car. The Koreans are steady thumping. They're like, <laughs> While the Koreans is shooting, Ghost then walks up on the opposite side of the car and shoots Dylan in the back of his head and then the blind dude in the passenger seat. After he shoots and kills them, Ghost then ducks off and run. Tommy doesn't even get to notice that Ghost was the one that saved him. But then we see the cutaway shot to Ghost security guard sitting in the car watching the whole thing. He actually did see Ghost leave the club and followed him to the church. So now the security guard knows that Ghost is a fucking killer. Mm -mm -mm. He came in jukebox at the strip club and all them hoes look like they pussy stink and like they had like two dollar hot wings on sale <laughs> and pubic hairs everywhere. I was like eh. So Jukebox let Kanan know that she knows that he fucked Candy and that he shouldn't be handing out jewelry and shit that could be traced back to them. And then the next time he want to stick his dick up in her bitch, just to ask, he would have let her do it. And so he was like, the next time I will. She was like, nigga, ain't going to be no next time. You done got you some money. The job is over. It's time for your ass to fuck the bounce. And she's like, so what you going to do now? And he says, I'm going to pop that nigga ghost and get my business back. And... Jukebox checks him and she says, you need to think revenge. Killing ghosts is too easy. You ever think he's worth more to you alive than dead? You saw what I did with dirt. Keep him around till he wasn't useful to me anymore. Before you make a move, you got to ask yourself, what did ghosts really take from you? Maybe you need to change your plan. Listen to what the writers wrote. That scene basically is setting the pace for, like I said, Kane is going to make an attempt on the kids' lives. Remember the line says, what did Ghost really take from you? He really took from him his business and his son, to be honest with you. So now he's going to try to take his kids away from him and his empire. So what I'm thinking is going to happen is, Kane is going to attempt to kidnap the kids, use them for ransom, get the money, and then kill Ghost. That makes the most sense. Maybe it'll play out differently, but something is going to happen with them kids and it being on Kanan.
Mr. Harley, she's in the kitchen listening to her messages. She got a message from the wellness clinic about her appointment. She deletes it. Tommy walks in. She realized he was shot. He says it was a professional job and that he thinks that it was Lobos. She is freaked the fuck out. She is scared out of her fucking mind. She assures him that everything is going to be all right. And she leaves and tells him that she's about to go get some bandages and peroxide and shit. We see Ghost goes back to the club and he sees the security guard. He was like, look, I'm going to holler at you later. I still remember what you told me earlier. We're going to talk. And the security dude was like, uh-huh. We're going to talk all right, motherfucker. We're going to talk. So then Karen walks up to him and she is so happy and pleased with all his social media work. And she's like, everyone will know who you are now. Everyone's going to know who James St. Patrick is. And she goes to take a selfie and she tells the security guard guy to take the selfie for them. And so... He takes the picture of Ghost and Karen. That's setting up the scene for him to blackmail Ghost. Because everyone in the world now knows who James St. Patrick is. And of course it cannot be known that James St. Patrick is a fucking killer. So he's going to blackmail Ghost. She's at home after work. She is drinking and thinking, honey. She has had a long motherfucking day. Because Sax told her that they're finally going to get Tommy Egan, a.k.a. Ghost, in jail. Of course, she's not going to tell Ghost this because all they do is lie to each other. Ghost comes home. Then he's sitting next to her and she turns to him. She says, Jamie, I don't think we're going to make it. He says, I'm here. You're here. We're here together. That's what you wanted? Like, what the fuck, bitch? God damn it. All you do is complain. I want this to work. I really, really do. But you're never home. I'm never home. What are we doing? Playing make-believe? You're not even divorced yet. And he says, I know it's scary. And I know it's a lot of people that don't want to see us together. But you can't let past in your head. She says, no, it's not past. It's everything. Did you ever wonder if everyone else was right and we were the ones that was wrong? No. I never think that. And I think you should never think that. I'm not letting you go. And then they stare at each other like they're on a soap opera. And it's just like... And he like, and I'm like, the very end of the episode, we see Holly go to the Jamaican spot and we already know what this bitch is up to. And I'm like, oh my God, Holly, sit your frail ass the fuck down, you Taylor Swift wannabe. Sit down somewhere. So she goes, she talks to the little Jamaican dude. She pay him off. He asks her who's the target and she shows him a picture of ghosts. And I was like, I low-key respect Holly in this scene because she's protecting her budding family. She got to do what the fuck she got to do to make sure her and her baby don't die. Or her nigga going to die. Sucks for Tasha and her family. But hell, Tasha probably do the same thing if it was left up to her. Um, I love tonight's episode. I give it an A+. Plus. The ante has been upped. Next week episode, episode 5, is going to be spectacular. You know, episode 5 is always the most memorable episode of the season outside of the season finale. Hold on to your seats. This shit about to get real. Let me know down below in the comment section what was your favorite part of tonight's episode. What really got you on the edge of your seat. What pissed you the fuck off. What made you laugh. My favorite scene was when Ghost told Angela, <laughs> yeah, it is my business when you're going over there talking to my wife. But <laughs> he had to let that hoe know, bitch. You are the side hoe. Stay in the side hoe place, hoe. Um, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe. Thumbs it up. Share it on your social media platforms. All of my social media info is in the description box below. I'll show you my beat tonight. I did a reverse smoky eye for you all tonight. Get into that wing liner and a reverse smoky eye. Yes, God. Beat on fleek. Yes, God. Thank you all again for watching this video. I love you all so, so very much. Have a blessed and safe week. Love you all so much. Bye. My latest book, Radio Silence, is available right now on Kindle, Nook, and in paperback. Check it out now at Amazon or BarnesandNobles.com.